Hi, Keith here with the first in a series of short videos about using Primer and Permanova to analyze multivariate environmental and biological data. So the first thing I need to do is get some data to work with because my workspace here in Primer is empty. And I'm going to use simulated data. Um, and the situation of simulated is an oceanic area sloping from 25 meters deep to 75 meters deep where there are three oil platforms indicated by the circles here which are leaking oil which is becoming incorporated into the bottom sediments and potentially affecting the marine organisms. The diamonds here indicate locations where I've taken samples. So I've got samples at the west platform and the east platform and then far west and far east. And together that set of samples there is the northern set of samples. And I've got the same set of samples down here to the south downstream of the platforms. Okay, here is the biological data that the simulation generates. And the worksheet here is set up as it needs to be for easy Im importing and use in Primer. So the first two columns in the data are just the locations of the samples. And in other situations, these could be latitudes and longitudes. Then I've got depth in meters where the sample was taken, average sediment particle size in micrometers, nutrients, that's a bit of a fudge factor, and hydrocarbons or pollutants in the sediment sample in parts per million. Note that I've got a blank column and then two columns of labels. And these two columns here are the factors in the design, north versus south, and then the four locations across the region from west to east. In the first column, I've got a code which simply loc labels each sample in terms of where it was collected. So northwest, north, far west, and so on. That's the environmental. The biological is similar. At the end of the set of variables, I've got a blank column and the same two factors. And in the first column, I've got the labels. And then the columns themselves just consist of counts of the number of individuals of each of the taxa that were present. And in this case, we have crustaceans, mollusks, and worms. Okay, I will now switch back to Primer and we'll import those files. So first open, I need to switch to files of type Excel. There's the data file, open it. And then select the worksheet. First of all, I start with the environmental. It is sample data, next. I don't have a title, I do have row labels. The samples are rows, not columns. And I've got environmental data. And then you need to select the correct option down here if there are any blank cells in the worksheet. Finish. I follow a convention where I label the data sheets as data, so as D, so E and V. And if I hit edit factors, you'll see that Primer has imported those last two columns and is interpreting them as factors in the design. Now back to open. Again, switch down to Excel files, same data file, open it up and select the bio. Next, just switch this to be abundance because I've got counts of abundance. If it's biomass, biomass. Finish. And then again, I'll rename that as d dash bio and now save the whole thing as demo the next thing we should do is actually have a bit of a look at the data to see the distributions particularly of the environmental variables now i'm not going to actually use x and y here today so i could just delete them it's easier just to select the variables I am going to use and then go select highlighted. 
You'll know it, I can also select particular combinations of samples and variables on other bases. So now I've got these selected and I'll do a draftsman's plot which just plots each variable against each other variable. Now you'll see they fall into two groups on many of these plots. That's just because the samples are taken in distinct depth zones around about 50 meters and around about 70 meters. So that's not an issue. If the samples take more evenly through the area, we'd see a scatter through here. Distribution for sediment particle size looks to be fairly even, and so is the, the case for nutrients. But the hydrocarbons are a bit scattered here, um, with a bit of a triangular sort of distribution. So it might be a good idea to actually transform the hydrocarbons. Now I can do that in primer here by hitting hydrocarbons. And now there's two ways to transform here. I'll show you the first way now and the second one in a moment. So I'll go to Tools, Transform Individuals, Rename the variables, hit Function, and then hit the Log function down here. Now, I'm going to need to add in a 1 because there are some zeros in that variable. OK. Now we create a new worksheet here and it's just copied over the values for the first three variables but taken logs of the hydrocarbons and re renamed the variable on that basis. So rename that D log back HC and do the draftsman's plot again. Now these are staying the same because I haven't done anything to those and this is looking rather better there. I'm not going to completely eliminate the scatter because there are samples where there are is pollution and samples where there isn't. Right, back here. Now that's the first step in working with the environmental data looking to see whether any of the variables need to be transformed. The second step with environmental variables is typically to normalize. And this is necessary because frequently the environmental variables are different kinds of things measured on different scales. So for instance, depth is measured in meters, sediment particle size is measured in micrometers, nutrients is measured in a con is a concentration, doesn't really matter, and hydrocarbons are measured in parts per million. The last two of these are similar in that they're measurements of concentrations of things, but the first two are quite different. We could also express some of these in different terms. Hydrocarbons could be expressed in parts per thousand or parts per billion. Sediment particle size in millimetres instead of micrometres. And doing these sorts of re-expressions would change the values. It wouldn't change the underlying numbers, 740 micrometers is still the same measurement, but it's a different number if expressed in millimeters. And so we could change the results we get just by changing the scale of measurement, which doesn't make too much sense. So normalize. Now here's the second way in which we can transform variables up on the analyze pre-treatment. And then we've got a range of options down here. Transform overall is what I want to do because I want to transform the entire data sheet. And I want to, whoops, try that again, analyze pretreatment, normalize variables. And normalize transforms each variable so that it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So they all play an equal part in any other results we look at. Again, I'll rename that as D E N V norm. OK, that's the environmental variables normalized. The last step we need to do with the environmental variables is for many of the analyses in Primer and Permanova, we're looking at patterns of similarity or difference. So we need to calculate the resemblance of the samples. So I click here, Resemblance. And Primer selects Euclidean because I've told it when I imported this data that it was environmental data and Euclidean distance is the generally accepted default for environmental data. So rename again, uh, 
env dash norm. So I've got the resemblance matrix. Just resemblance matrix for the environmental data norm and Euclidean distance. Now the biological data. Well, altogether we've got a whole lot of species here. So a draftsman's plot of that is not going to be particularly useful. Um, species data tend to be rather better behaved. But frequently, before doing analysis, we will do a transformation. Pretreatment, transform. This is the other way to do the transform. And for the biological data, often it's a square root, possibly a fourth root or a log, in extreme cases, presence, absence. And what we're doing here is we are decreasing the importance of the very abundant species and thereby enhancing or increasing the influence that the less common species have on the outcome of analyses. If we go and look at this particular set of data, you can see that some species are in the thousands, some in the hundreds, and some in the tens. So it might be a good idea just to square root this to bring all the species into play. In some data sets where a few of the species are in the thousands or tens of the thousands and the others are quite uncommon, you might need a stronger transform. So rename the item again, d-bio dash sqrt and then finally we need to calculate the resemblance matrix here for the biological data so resemblance again primer has picked the, the recommended default Bray Curtis and now we've got the resemblance matrix so what we're looking at here with the resemblance matrix is each sample being compared to each other sample and in the case of Bray Curtis, a high number means they're similar and a smaller number means they're different. So I'll rename that item again. R for resemblance, bio, um, SQRT, just S, and BC for Bray Curtis. So now what we've done is we've worked through the environmental and biological data doing the preliminary analyses um, and inspections and calculations that we need to do to get our data files ready for doing other sorts of things such as NMDS, non-metric multidimensional scaling, cluster analysis and so on.